Welcome back, my name is Benji, and today I want to welcome you to a brand new series on the channel. It all started with the following message. Hello Benji, you've dissected every race winning performance on the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast, taken PCM teams to glory, and actively contributed to Jumbo Visma winning the Tour de France. We challenge you to take on the role of Directeur Sportive of the ZHQ Ravens and deliver them to glory in the Zwift Racing League. Zwift. Firstly, for the people that don't know, what is Zwift? Zwift is an indoor cycling app that allows you to ride with people all over the world in a virtual world. You basically take your bike, deploy it on your smart trainer, then connect that smart trainer to Zwift and you're ready to ride. But Zwift is not only for your personal training, there's also plenty of races done on the platform and that's where the Zwift Racing League comes in. The Zwift Racing League is a team-based event organized on Zwift. Every season over 2,000 teams compete in this. If my math is relatively okay, that means about 19,000 players. Our team shares a league with 16 other teams that will compete against over the next six weeks because that's what our race calendar looks like. Six weeks, every Tuesdays, six races in total. Considering this video exists, it's pretty clear that I accepted the challenge. But who are the ZHQ Ravens? Who is our majestic team? Starting off with James Haywood, Chris Nook, Anders Stevens, Nick Colley, Daniel Ogello, and also James Dobson. Most likely these names mean nothing to you, but let's change that. Let's have them introduce themselves. Hello, uh, I'm James Dobson, lighter rider, so typically better on the climbs. Probably put me in a puncher category. Hello, my name is Daniel Ajalo. Can hold a decently high number for five to ten minutes, maybe twenty minutes. Absolutely no sprint in me. Hey, I'm Nick. I'm riding ZRL this season to try get a bit faster. I definitely prefer a long climb, and I really struggle on the flats. I'm Anders, probably a, a slow sprinter. Pretty much no strengths and a lot of weaknesses. But I think overall that just means I've got a lot of room for opportunity and growth. Hi, I'm Chris. My strengths as a rider, I'm, I'm a sprinter, a bit of a ruler, weaknesses, hills. Hi, I'm uh, James Hayward. Sprints and finish lines are pretty good. Hill climbs, not so good for me. I think we came 10th last season, really hoping to improve on that. I decided to take a close look at their Zwift power pages and for James Haywood, for example, it confirms that his one minute power is really good, 15 second power as well, so he has those sprints, but not the purest of sprints. He's basically a versatile sprinter. The pure sprinter in the team is Chris Nook, 14.01 watts per kilo on 15 seconds. That's really good for 80 kilos and that shows in his raw watts as well. That's what he does, pure sprints, and he's actually got pretty decent one minute power as well. The strengths of Anders also lie within the 15 second one minute margin, but also just plainly on the flat. Nick Colley is basically our in-house AliExpress Louis Mankies, a guy that is good at climbing, lightweight, longer efforts, but due to his lightweight he can't produce the highest raw watts and as a consequence might have trouble on the flat. Daniel's 5 minute power suggests he's a bit of a ruler and as a consequence he might be very useful in team time trials for our team. James Dobson just promoted from being a Cat C racer to a Cat B racer and his punching stats are quite good. 15 second, 1 minute power, especially because he's a lightweight rider as well like Nick Colley. Anyway, that's our lineup for day one. There will be some other Ravens you'll get to know in the coming weeks, but those are not on today's lineup. So, we've gotten to know the ZHQ Ravens a bit better and we know which riders we are working with today, but we don't know what parkour we'll be riding, so let us take a look at race day one. Today's route is Rulmapool, 26.2 kilometers a hilly parkour in front. We start off with an explosive kick on the Petit KOM, after which we head towards the Aqueduct KOM, then the versatile sprinters that survived the first two climbs can sprint on both the Pave Sprint and the Marina Sprint. The race ends with an uphill kick again, once again that Petit KOM from earlier, and that's where the finish line lies on top. Now, a profile gives us loads of information, but I want to be certain that I don't miss a thing here, so I'm gonna write the parkour myself as a recon and then see if there's anything on the route that we can't see on the profile. From the starting pens, it only takes about 200 meters 40 climb to start the Petit KOM, 2.9 kilometers, 3%. It's gonna be quite explosive because this is a 6 to 7 to 8 minute effort depending on the rider, but I quickly realized that this climb is a bit of a fake news climb the first kilometer is quite hard seven to eight percent in place as well the second kilometer gives a bit of a rest period two to three percent for most of that kilometer before the slopes get harder again towards the top of the climb because the last kilometer is once again seven to eight percent in places but they gotta watch out the riders because at the top there's this plateau section and if you stop pedaling on that plateau section you might lose contact to the group so Keep pedaling until the descent starts. 8.8 .8 kilometers into the race, the road surface changes towards a light gray color, and that's when the aqueduct KOM starts. A 420 meter, 3% 
KOM. Basically, it's supposed to be a climb, but I'd rate it more as an uphill sprint, to be honest. After the Akuda KOM, there's not too much recovery before we start the next sprint, Pave Sprint. As the name suggests, Pave, it's also a cobble sprint, so we gotta keep that in mind. The final sprint of the day, the Marina Sprint, lies just before the final climb of the day, which means that if you can skip this sprint, you might have a better chance at the finish line. But, for example, if you come to the sprint and say to yourself, I'm not gonna make that final climb anyway, then you might as well go for it. But anyway, the final climb starts at 23.3 kilometers, once again, the Sufferfest of the Petit KOM, 2.9 kilometers, 3%, everybody knows it by now, so yeah, finish line lies at the top, as simple as that. So we prepared one vital part, we know what route we'll be riding, but there's the aspect of building a strategy for the team on that specific parkour, and for that I need to know how points can be earned along the way, so let's take a look at the point system of Zwift Racing League. At the finish line, it is simple. The higher your finishing position, the more points you earn for your team, but there's also the ability of earning points along the way at intermediate sprints and KOMs. There are two ways to earn points along the way, FAL and FTS. FAL stands for first across line, which is simple. The first 10 riders that cross the line of an intermediate sprint gain the points. FTS points are different, that means fastest through segment, basically the fastest riders between the start and the end line of a segment. For example, if your rider is 40 minutes behind, you can still earn points as long as you're one of the faster riders in between the start and end point of an intermediate sprint. There we have it, our three ways to earn points along the way, but how will we plan this out? Which riders should go for which sprints, which riders fit at the finish line, let's take a look at that. James Haywood will be our first key rider today, aiming to survive the first climb with the best riders to then fight for points at the Aqueduct KOM. After that, his aim is to recover and fight for the best possible finishing position at the end of the race. Chris Nook, our sprinter, will go all out for the Pave sprint and the Marina sprint, so a vital part will be surviving both the Petit KOM and the Aqueduct KOM. Nick Colley, our climber, is going to try and focus on the best possible finishing position. Same for Daniel, because he's better at these longer efforts. Considering this is one of Dobson's first races at this level of racing, he will just try and survive, don't work at the front and see where he can finish at the end. Anders Stevens is our wild card in this race, a complete gamble strategy. His aim is to drop on the first line with a few other riders, preferably not alone. After that, sit in and recover as much as possible and go all out for the Pave sprint and the Marina sprint to hunt for the fastest through segment points. Now, the strategy side of things is done when it comes to our preparation, there's two more things we need to look into. First of all, let's talk about the equipment. The riders need to select a certain bike type and wheel type and so forth. For this parkour, a pretty flat parkour throughout, I think it's pretty obvious. We need to go for the aero bike. Lastly, let us talk about something very unique towards Zwift itself, power-ups. If you ever played the likes of Mario Kart as a kid, you had these random abilities that would pop up that you could use, for example, throwing a banana at your opponents or making yourself turn into a rocket. On Zwift you've got something similar, but these are just abilities that make you better. In today's race, there are three power-ups we could get. The first one is the arrow boost, making you more aerodynamic for 15 seconds, best use in a sprint. The second one is the ghost, which makes you invisible for 10 seconds. The last power-up is a steamroller, basically changing a cobblestone surface to a regular road surface. This one's best used on the pave sprint in this specific race. Anyway, that's about it when it comes to our preparation for today's race. We'll now look into the race itself, things will go wrong left and right, it's my job to try and adapt throughout the process and make sure the riders know what to do at what points in the race, so that's what we'll do in the race, let's hope it works out. So the key part of the start of the race is surviving the Petit KOM, let's see how the Ravens do. Race is off, I see all the orange jerseys relatively to the front, so keep it up, climb is about to start, we're 1.5 kilometers in, that means we've got roughly half the climb left to go, it means you've already survived half the climb. Come on, Dobson, you can do this. Come on, come on, come on. One kilometer towards the top. You're acing it, my friend. You're acing it. You're holding on. A solid start so far, but Dobson was getting in trouble. Together with Anders at the back of the peloton. So I had to adapt accordingly. Anders, potentially what I would say is that Dobson is about three riders behind you. If you two could stay together, he can help you with your sprints. Awesome ride so far, guys. Awesome ride. Front riders are hitting the top of the climb. As we reached the top of the climb, the situation was as follows. James Haywood and Chris Nook in the front group. Nick Colley and Daniel Ogello were in a bit of trouble just off the back of that front group, while James Dobson and Anders Stevens were behind because they were recovering for the actual flat sprints later on. Anyway, the next phase of the race, the Aqueduct KOM. I've got a yes. steamroller, which is yes. perfect for the second sprint. Shall I hold on to my steamroller until then? 
I would say go for the Aquatic KOM, keep your steamroller and go for the sprint as well. Nice. In about 1.1 kilometers, so at 8.8 .8 kilometers, at 8.8 .8 starts the Aqueduct KOM. Let's go. You're passing every single one of them. You're going to get a good one here. I can feel it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. A bit more to go. 200 meters, 150 meters. Oh, la, 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 la. You're flying past people, my friend. You're flying past people. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. Yes, 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 yes. Nice one, man. Nice one. An outstanding performance by James Haywood. He not only got third over the line itself, but he also got second when it comes to the fastest through the segment. Basically taking home 23 points at this one segment. If you have anything left, try and use that steamroller on the uh, pave sprint. The pave sprint starts at 10.8 kilometers. That also counts for snook, but I'll check in a second where you are. Okay, you are near the back of the front group, but you're holding on. Keep it up, my friend. Come on, come on, come on. You're doing well. 10.8, 10.8 starts the sprint. Yes. Use your steamroller, don't forget. Keep it up. You're flying through Haywood. I'm gonna try and switch towards Snook and take a look at you. Oh la 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 la. What a sprint, guys. What a sprint. Keep it up, keep it up. A bit longer, a bit longer. You're nearing the line. There we go. There we go. Nice one, guys. Nice one. Chris Snook with a fantastic sprint, getting third at the intermediate here while James Haywood takes away the seventh spot. For the FTS points, we have to wait until Anders reaches here. What distance is the Pave sprint again? You're about 700 meters away from it. If you have Steamroller, that is the time to use it. Let's go, Anders. That's it, Anders. Nice, nice. Nice, Anders. Just around that corner. Awesome ride, awesome ride, awesome ride. Despite the glorious attempt, the strategy with Anders did not pay off. Not a single point when it comes to the FTS points, while both Haywood and Snook actually got points 6th and 7th. In total, we gained 21 points at the Pave Sprint. The next sprint is the Marina Sprint. The Marina Sprint arrives at 21.9 kilometers. So there is a recovery period between now and that 21.9 kilometers. When we arrived at the Marina Sprint, the goal was for Chris Snook to sprint again, but his energy was just not there. So in other words, our only hope was gaining FTS points with Anders Stevens. If possible, Dobson trying up the speed a tiny bit before the sprints. And if you still have energy left, go for the sprint yourself. Anders, you know what to do. That sprint is yours, eh? That sprint is yours. 21.9. There we go. Sprint starts. Go, 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 go. Flying through, flying through, flying through, Anders. You got that guy. You're going to destroy that guy that's sprinting next to you. You're flying past him, flying past him. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. He's trying to use your draft, but you're much stronger. You're much stronger. Catch that guy in front of you. You can do it. Fly past them. Fly past them. Last 100 meters. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Close one. Really good, really good, really good. But once again, the strategy backfired. Not in the top 10. Not a single point for us at the Marina Sprint. There's only one obstacle left. The final climb. Let's see how we do. Keep it up, Haywood. 10th in the race right now. A few riders up the road. You're climbing really, really well. 26.2 kilometers is where the race ends. So you've got about 1.5 kilometers left to ride, my friend. I can see the sweat dripping off your face, but I believe, man, I believe. Come on, come on, come on. This is the steepest spot. This is the steepest spot. It's gonna flatten out a tiny bit. Last 400 meters of climbing, roughly. You're flying towards the front, my friend. You're flying towards the front. You might generally catch them at this tempo. 250 meters, it's two hundred fifty meters. Come on. Thanks, going, keep going. You're gonna smash that top 10. You're gonna smash that top 10. There's a tiny bit more just after the top. If you can keep that up, then you'll see the red banner where the finish line lies. So come on, come on, come on, come on. Last kick, last kick, last kick. Yes, yes, yes. Stay ahead of him. Awesome, awesome, awesome ride. Awesome, awesome ride, Haywood. Awesome, awesome, awesome ride. There we go, Snook. Last kilometer for you as well. Last 500 meters even. There we go. Nice finish, my friend. Nice finish. If you can catch that one rider in front of you, that one rider, you're going to get a top 50. Come, Come on, Dan. Dan you can oh, do this. Yes. You can do this. That guy in front of you, is, he's, he's exploding. His legs are done. His legs are completely done. 100 meters to go. 100 meters to go. 100 meters to go. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. There, there we go. go. You've got your top 50. You can be proud. Nick, you're almost there as well. Come on, Nick. Last punch. Last 100 meters. Absolutely smashing it, my friend. Absolutely smashing it. What a ride. What a ride by this team. What a ride. Smashed it. Smashed it. 
Oh, cross the line. Well done. Cheers. Really good, Dobson. Really good, really good. And you're there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Smash the team. Well done. Well done, team. You can be proud. Thanks, Benji. That's it, then. Our first race with the ZHQ Ravens. But it took a while until the points came in. Let's see how we did. In the end, we finished on the sixth spot out of 16 teams. Personally, I'm really happy with that. A good, strong performance on day one. Some strategies went great. Some strategies didn't go to plan at all. It is clear that James Haywood was our MVP when it comes to points in today's race. Chris Nook also a wonderful performance despite not being able to sprint at the last Marina sprint. When it comes to the rest of the team, strong performance overall, but the strategies did not pay off. So... That's my fault. In the end, getting sixth, I can only be proud. And I'm really happy about it. And so are the riders. A solid race today. I think that is probably the top performance we've actually had as a team. I think provisionally sixth. Seriously tough course. The hilltop finish is not, not my idea of fun. A great race, really, really fun. Uh, it helps a lot having Benji as our DS. Usually we set a strategy and then it just goes off the window immediately. Which it kind of did today because I definitely didn't stick to my role, managed to get dropped in the first climb. Um, but it was really helpful having Benji there in, in our ear to kind of tell us how to adapt to the strategy as we went along. There we go, that is it for our first race day with the ZHQ Ravens. Next week, our team is going to take on a team time trial. I've got no clue how team time trials work on Zwift, so... I've got some learning to do. If it wasn't obvious yet, this video was sponsored by Zwift. If you want to check it out, there's a 14-day trial available on Zwift.com. So head over there and check it out. Thanks for watching today's video and the Ravens will see you soon. Goodbye.